competitors teams as well there's a pokemon insurance team i really want to talk about that is the mimikyu sitting there in a spot and this is a pokemon that can be so versatile uh, particularly with its ability as well it can just stay around on the field be able to take an attack um, with its disguise ability there and can do so much whether it's sitting in a trick room whether it's going for will-o-wisps um, it can really cause a lot of mayhem but if we take a look at miguel's side as well there are a few familiar faces on here as well we can see the rillaboom and the colossal and um, the urshifu as well well, and again with Colossal, where would Colossal be without its partner Dragapult there as well? But a Pokemon I really want to mention is that Celesteela. I think it's a Pokemon that's been slept on quite a lot. And if you're able to get it in a position where your opponent doesn't have an answer to it, it might be a long one, but you'll be able to take a win. Yeah, it's an interesting Pokemon and one we really haven't seen too much of throughout this tournament so far. So nice to see Miguel kind of piloting it this deep into the tournament and showing what it's capable of. And the surrounding Pokemon um, to the Celestia are interesting as well. You know, we've got a very similar build to what we've seen earlier with that Dragapult, Colossal, Rillaboom combination, that core there made up as well, partnered by the um, the Urshifu. And a little tag on as well as Ndidi, you know, with that redirection support, the psychic terrain as well that it brings and prevents any sort of priority attacks for things grounded um it's a really nice build i'm excited to see the celesteela like you lou but if we jump over to sean's team we can also mention another pokemon i believe has definitely been slept on and that is the stack attacker one of the slowest pokemon that we've got access to in the entire format and a real powerful pokemon that has just dominated previous formats it really hasn't kind of found its footing yet in the, in the series seven but i feel like it is starting to make some headway and some ground to proving that it is a very strong pokemon and you imagine putting the stack uh, the stack attacker and talk all next to each other on the field it's going to be a, a, a really hard task to deal with in a trick room environment Oh, that is the ultimate trick room environment, Stack Attacker and Talk World. I think I would run away in terror, but let's take a look at the achievements of our trainers as well. So you can get to know them a little bit better at home. Sean Rosani in 2017 managed to place in the top 32 at the Oceana International Championships. And then further back in 2015 was actually top eight at the Australian Nationals. So again, he's used to these kind of top cup finishes. And he's going to want to be able to try and take that experience online in this Players Cup 2 title. Um, Miguel as well, you know, he's got top 32. 32 finishes at two very prestigious events in 2019 at the European International Championships and then followed it up at the World Championships. So again, someone used to getting in these top cuts and wants to take that experience here to try and get themselves to those grand finals and take the championship title. They're both still in it, but they can't afford another slip up. Yeah, like you say, lots of experience in this similar situations before, so they'll be they'll be able to kind of translate that into this sort of match. It's a little bit different from your normal event that they've played in before, but I'm sure they're going to be more used to it by now. And it is mm -hmm. just about it's get it's again it's always comes down to this in a losers bracket. Everything on the line it makes it so difficult because you've got the the stress of knowing if I lose this one, I'm out, and that is really heartbreaking to think about. And that's the thing that you've got to really put out of your mind and just mm -hmm. concentrate on the match in front of you like I, I know i'm sound like a bit of a broken record here lou but it is very true you know um it, it's it's so true you've got to just concentrate on the matchup in front of you mm -hmm. and you know the player that does that we saw in the previous game when nick was so composed he knew what he had to do he knew what his advantages were in that match and he played a beautiful game you know against david and made it impossible for him to really get any sort of momentum there um and the little bit of momentum that we saw from that previous game was just shut down and i think that needs to be translated into these players and i'm sure with the experience that they've got they're going to be able to do that and it's going to make for an extremely exciting game going into this one lots of different modes to teams that we've seen you know you've got one beast ultra beast on one team the celesteela mm -hmm. going up against the ultra beast on the other team the stack attacker so it's kind of like the duke off of the the ultra beasts in this one going in but you know there's lots of combinations in both sides of the field that, that can do a lot of big damage and that both players need to be very very respectful of going into the game well, you and I have both kind of highlighted an Ultra Beast on either side of the team. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out victorious. So let's jump into the match. And like you said, Lee, one match at a time. Let's do game one and see exactly what these players are going to be bringing. It's going to be the Ndidi and the Colossal coming out here for Miguel. Um, so an interesting combination. They often see Ndidi paired up next to the Colossal. But on the opposing side of the field, there for Sean, we've got the Rillaboom and the Venusaur as well. So two Grass-type Pokemon here facing down against a Psychic-type. That's something I think Venusaur is going to be a little bit nervous about. Um, and Colossal as well, being able to fire off big, powerful Fire-type attacks. Sean has to watch out and make sure he avoids them. But he has managed to win the terrain walls. The grassy terrain is in effect. 
Yeah, that's a, that's interesting. You think maybe the the, the Rillaboom is very slow, which um, allows you to get that Garcy terrain up, which is a massive advantage here. You've got access to Fake Out now on Tien and Didi, which with the Psychic terrain up on the field, it would have never been able to utilize that move. So being able to remove the uh, redirection here is a great option. And obviously with the Colossal not in a position to get any sort of surf or uh, the weakness policy activated through a water type attack on the field right now Venusaur's not in a bad spot to do some big damage through potentially a max quake if that's what the options are for sean well this is going to be the double protect here coming out from miguel potentially wants to avoid a fake out here um, that would cause any disruption um going straight into that indeedy slot as Venusaur goes for the sleep powder tugging down into that colossal and i think that's a really interesting play here from miguel because you know you could go for something like the follow me and redirect that um sleep powder around if you've got something like the safety goggles obviously the powder moves are not going to affect you and that allows you to protect your colossal really well so a good double protect there not letting fake out foil the plan yeah, and that, that's the nice option here because you kind of mitigate the, the fake out completely now and you're back in a position where indeed he can support perfectly with that follow me. Take away the threat of the, the sleep powder and whatever the Rillaboom decides to do. You know, Rillaboom is a Pokemon that can carry high horsepower, commonly does that will threaten that Colossal as well. And without the steam engine boost, Colossal is not a Pokemon that you want sitting in front of the majority of the format because it is going to be slow. It needs that speed boost to operate. So uh, if you are Miguel, I'm sure you're aware of this. It might be a time to bring that Celesteela on the field though. Yeah, Celesteela would be a great option here. Just able to um, sort of really counter down against both of these grass type Pokemon. And, you know, a Dynamax Celesteela, I would love to see. Just going to throw that out there. But first of all, it's going to be a Gigantamax Venusaur coming out here for Sean. So going to be able to utilize this grassy terrain. The Rillaboom is set up to deal out some really big um, grass type damage. Maybe try and get rid of that Indeedee from the fray so you don't have to worry about it anymore gonna be a dynamax however as well from miguel really wouldn't be surprised to see this being that colossal because if you're miguel you're gonna want to start setting up your residual damage as well maybe going for a gmax volcolith you know in retaliation to that gmax vine vine lash where they're both these players are going to start setting up those residual damages every single turn but also if you're colossal you can go for a max flare into either one of sean's pokemon here and deal some super effective damage and dd no longer going to be pinned in by a fake out can go for that follow me and redirect all of the attention onto itself. The Vine Lash is going to connect even with the terrain boosting up the grass type moves. It's not going to be enough to pick up a KO against the DD, so it's also going to be able to bring around the move coming out from that Rillaboom. GMAX Volcalith however going to come out, connect onto that Venusaur do about a third of damage and critically set up the um, rocks here as well. You know, you can always go for that fire type move on the next turn if you are the Colossal. The high horsepower are going to come in though and connect onto the DD, picking up the KO We'll be able to obviously knock out the NDD, but now gives Miguel the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back. And if it's something like that Dragapult, you can go for that setup on the Colossal. Yeah, and that's really well played by Miguel. And you know, he's put himself in a great position, like you say, Lou, for, to bring that Dragapult in this next turn and really utilize the, uh, the the ability to surf, activate that steam engine, and then get rid of the Venusaur, which is probably the thing that you really want to get rid of you know first and foremost because of the potential uh, max quake options that it's got there but you can't really underestimate the rillaboom as well we've already seen the high horsepower come out there and that will do a lot of damage but potentially you are going to be able to take it in, in, in its gmax form so um the, the, if the dragon comes onto the field this next turn we don't even know yet but it, with the mind games are going to start to kind of take effect because if you Attack into the Venusaur. Sean could go for a max guard there and just high horsepower, take advantage of that that turn, stop damage from the, the G Max Colossal and pick up maybe some big damage uh, with a high horsepower there. Like I say, it probably won't be enough, but it could be enough um, to kind of get you the room in this match. And the drawback with going with a max flare in this situation as well, if you are Miguel, is it's setting the sun up and giving that Venusaur its chlorophyll ability boost. It's not something you really want to be doing this early on in the game because if you give it that, it is going to be able to pressure very hard, especially without your raw and steam engine boost to take advantage of. I mean, this is the thing, bringing in the Rillaboom as well, it can go for a fake out into that opposing Rillaboom and pin it down so that the Colossal can either go something like a Max Flare into the Rillaboom um, and deal a huge amount of damage or then leaves it free to target down the Venusaur. But if it is targeted down the Venusaur, you have to be careful of something like a Max Guard. This is a move that Sean can easily sort of read into, sort of the fake out and the target down on the other Pokemon. Um, so you might just want a Max Guard and then you would waste one of the 
G-Max turns of that Colossal. But Riddaboom actually going to retreat to the Pokeball there for Sean. It's going to bring out the Torkoal. So I really like this adjustment here. Yes, you are setting up the Sun. That's going to boost up the Fire-type moves from that Colossal. But it has not had its Steam Engine activated. It doesn't have a Speed Advantage. And this now allows the activation of the Chlorophyll on that Venusaur. It's going to be super speedy. And going for that Max Quake that you mentioned earlier, Lee, as well. Colossal quite wisely protecting itself from that. As the Riddaboom on Miguel's side does go for that U-turn. Just chipping away at the Torkoal hole. Torkoal here and just giving Miguel the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back. Yeah, and a nice play there from Miguel, you know. It would have been quite easy for him just to think, I'm just going to attack here into the Venusaur. Um, I'll be able to maybe, you know, survive whatever's thrown out at me. And, you know, making that play to make sure that you survive one turn, one additional turn more, um, and reposition yourself. The Torkoal on the field for Sean, though, it's making it very difficult for the Colossal to stick around. Um, as we do see the Urshifu hit the field now. And is it going to be able to do the damage that you need at this point? I don't know if it is. Uh, you know, the, the, the G-Max Venusaur, you're going to have to wait till it's not Gigantamax anymore to really be picking up knockouts, even with a Choice Band Urshifu variant that we, we may be seeing from um, from Miguel's side of the field here. I feel like the Torco Venusaur is doing a lot of work right now, and um, Miguel's got all the, all the things to, to do here after just Max guarding that previous turn with the Colossal now. Very threatened going into this next turn. The thing is as well, the Torkoal has really high defences, so the Urshifu, although it can still deal some good damage to it, uh, Colossal really wants to be the one that wants to target down that Torkoal just in order to try and pick up a really solid KO, but you can't leave that Venusaur um, vulnerable and exposed because then it can easily be KO'd by the Colossal in return, or it can deal out some really big damage to one of Miguel's Pokemon here, but Sean really trying to think through who does it want to target with that Venusaur going into um, the Colossal, it looks like he may have locked into, got a little sneak peek as Urshifu goes for that Aqua Jet though and will activate the steam engine um this is indeed the rapid strike variant so we finally get to see in this kind of late turns of the dynamax for that colossal um activation of the steam engine and that weakness policy um it is of course going to be able to outspeed going for that max flare into the venusaur and you know this is also boosted by the sun that torkoal very kindly set up for its opponent here solidly picking up the ko against that venusaur yeah, that's a super nice turn there from Miguel, getting the Aqua Jet there onto the Colossal, activating what he's been after this whole time with that weakness policy and the steam engine now in an incredibly good position uh, with the sun up as well, boosting those fire type attacks. The Ishifu is kind of come in. It is going to get knocked out it, it, straight away from the Torkoal, but it's done its job right now. You know, it's come in and got that uh, steam engine activated on the Colossal. So... You cannot complain for losing the Urshifu for that, I don't think, if you're Miguel. No, exactly. You know, removing the Urshifu from the field. Really good there for the Torkoal. Um, but you still are facing down against this Colossal. You know, it's got itself, like you said, Lee, into the position that it wants to be in with all of its boosts activated. And although it will go back down to its normal Colossal size here, it's still going to be a problem for Sean if he's not able to remove it from the field. You know, Torkoal um, doesn't want to take any of those rock-type moves, nor does something like a Charizard. Um, so it's going to be interesting for Sean how he's going to be able to play around it and if he has the utility, particularly now that Colossal is super speedy, to be able to take it down. Yeah, that's the problem. I think maybe you have to try and stall out this final turn of Dynamax, uh, the Gigantamax turn here, because once you do that, you put yourself in a better position to maybe... Um, Sorry, the, the giant Gandamax turn ending now. The problem is with the, um, the, the, the rock type attack of choice that the Colossals got. If Miguel's went for something, you know, like Ancient Power, then he's got a way to remove the Charizard straight away from the field. He's got Fake Out as well next to his Colossal, which can really support um, and stop either the Charizard or the Torkoal this turn. You're probably looking at the Torkoal, stop that this turn, and maybe just concentrate down on that Charizard, knowing that it could potentially have a ground type attack that are the, probably the most threatening things for Colossal right now. I mean, that's the thing, like you said, Lee, if, depending on what the rock type move of that Colossal is, it's going to limit the options available. Um, you know, Colossal, no for something like a Heat Wave, that's really not where you want to go into the two Fire type Pokemon with. You want to be able to go for those Ground or Rock type moves. Um, of course, Ground type, not going to affect that Charizard. So you need to be able to utilize something like Ancient Power or Meteor Beam. And if it is Meteor Beam, you're going to have to use that two charge effect. Torkoal is going to take actually reasonable damage from the Grassy Glide there coming out from the Rillaboom. 
Showing the Shooker Berry as well. It looks like this move is targeting down into the Torkoal and is able to follow up and pick up that KO. Earth Power going to be no match despite the Shooker Berry for the Torkoal. And this leaving Charizard free to go for the Scorching Sands. They're going to target down into that Colossal and pick up a KO in return. Now, this is where things have switched position pretty dramatically because there isn't a lot that Rillaboom can do to a Charizard Lee. Not at all, and I, I was very surprised to see the Earth Power there on, on the Colossal. Not something you commonly see used on that Pokemon, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the Scorching Sands coming out and uh, really making quick work of the Colossal there. And like you say, Lou, the, the Rillaboom doesn't really have the options to uh, to deal with the, the Charizard very well at all. So it's going to be a pretty easy way for Sean to wrap this up now especially in the sun boosting the, the Charizard's <laughs> fire type attacks and the fake out support that you've got from your own Rillaboom coming onto the field right now I mean, maybe Miguel was predicting there was going to be a protect on that Charizard or something and just played the ball play around it. But something like a fake out allowing something like Meteor Beam to be able to get that first turn charge. You're super speedy anyway, then you connect on the next turn would have been critical. But then at the same time, Charizard could just protect on that going forward. And you can see here Rillaboom is going to fall victim to that air slash, meaning that Sean is going to be able to take game one in this set during the loser's bracket. But let's jump into game two and see if Miguel is potentially able to claw it back and take us to a game three, depending on the the adjustments i mean colossal great pokemon leading out here and going for a more standard lead with that dragapult side by side and again a change up here for sean there's going to be the rillaboom on the field once again but no more venusaur instead it's going to be that mimikyu and this is where things get really interesting if that mimikyu is running something like the trick room you can really turn the speed advantage um, that your opponent has against them if that steam engine gets activated for example yeah, and, you know, that's the thing you need to be very conscious of as well if you are the Colossal. If you're going for that Surf combination with the um, with the, the GMAX Volcalith, you need to target into that Mimikyu, knowing that the Surf will break the Disguise ability on the Mimikyu, allowing you to potentially and hopefully pick up the Knockout on to, to stop that Trick Room. Because if the Trick Room goes up against Colossal after you've activated the Steam Engine, you're not going to be in a great position at all, especially knowing the sorts of Pokemon that Sean has access to and the abilities he has um, to, to take advantage of to pressure that Colossal and really make work hard for it. Well, the Colossal is going to certainly work hard and go for that Gigantamax here out into the field. So like you said, Lee, probably getting it activated sooner rather than later could be the key that Miguel needs to be able to turn this set around. And going for that Gigantamax straight away in turn one with the Dragapult here on the field could be the opportunity needed. You know, Fake Out is not going to affect the Ghost type. Dragapult's not going to fear that at all. But Sean is also going to match with a Gigantamax of his very own. It's going to be that Gigantamax of Rillaboom here. Going to be twirling the drumsticks, as I was corrected in Players' Cup 1. They are not batons. Drumsticks they are. Getting ready for the <laughs> action here with Sean's Rillaboom. Dragapult is going to go for that surf, however. I'm going to connect onto the Rillaboom, doing very, very little. But it's critical what it is doing on the other two Pokemon. The Colossal having its Steam Engine and its Weakness Policy activated here, as we know, is exactly the setup that Miguel needs in order to keep um, Colossal as a threat, but also on that Mimikyu breaking the disguise now leaves it exposed. It's not going to be able to take a nuller hit and sort of survive in the way the disguise lets it do. And the Volcalith is going to come out from that Colossal, targeting down into that Mimikyu and picks up the solid KO. Great targeting there by Miguel. You know, just removing the Mimikyu from threats, no longer something that Miguel has to deal with. Yeah, really nice play there from Miguel getting rid of that Trick Room threat. But at the same time, because of the, the, the options that Sean has, he's gone and returning with a huge knockout here into that Colossal, taking it down turn one and really nullifying any use that... Um, oh, it's actually survived. Oh. I was wrong. I thought it went down. <laughs> oh, I mean, me too. Oh. It just managed to hang on by a slither of wow. HP. I mean, what an amazing sort of team build there from Miguel. You know, he's really trained his Pokemon perfectly for that moment. Um, and it just leaves Colossal free to go for another really damage dealing attack in this next turn. But what a risk. That could so easily have gone one or two HP the other way. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I really felt... I I think that's the strongest Colossal that I've ever seen. I can't believe it survived that. You know, <laughs> uh, there's no screen support there and really took me by surprise. But, yeah, real credit to Miguel to show how well he's trained his Pokemon here, taking that big attack and now in a very 
good position going into this next turn uh, able to put a big chunk of damage onto the, the Rillaboom potentially pick up a knock up there or even just knock out the other Trick Room threat that is the Stack Attacker that's come onto the field now and maybe just concentrate down there because if you remove all the Trick Room options then if you're Miguel you're in a great position going forward with probably the more speedier Pokemon uh, out of the two teams. Well, no, that's very true. This isn't the only sort of trick room option that Sean has. That stack attacker can be formidable, particularly if it wants to get that trick room set up. Colossal going to go for that max flare. However, going to do everything it can to stop stack attacker. And it knocks it out in one hit. So I would safely say it has done enough at this stage. You know, stack attacker often does carry things like sugar berry for those ground type attacks or even a chopper berry for fighter type attacks, but doesn't often carry a knocker berry to save itself from those fire type attacks. Rillaboom as well is going to fall victim to a will -O from that Dragapult. And it's able to go for another max quake now i would say that it's you know had its attack depleted by that will-o-wisp but it will still be more than enough to pick up the ko against the colossal and this time it is able to find the target and pick up that ko but i think colossal being able to just remove that stack attacker from the field in one move is what it needed to do yeah, really good returns there. When you think about what you're making the use of those those Gigantamax or Dynamax turns, he's picked up two key knockouts there on, on Pokemon that would be so disruptive. When you think a Pokemon like Torkoal that Sean would rely on to come in in that Trick Room environment, just denying that speed control and giving yourself really an edge going forward in this game. As we see the Indeedee come onto the field for Miguel, it's going to overwrite the terrain. The Will-O-Wisp support there on the Dragapult as well is going to be another thing to really slow down that uh, Rillaboom, even in its G-Max form. Exactly, and indeed he is actually going to rejoin the field here just a little bit later on in the game than it did in game one, and it now has got advantage of that terrain. The psychic terrain is in effect, and it can once again start going and drawing in any of these attacks and leaving Dragapult free to do whatever it needs to do in this situation. It can always go for something like a Phantom Force here and just disappear, reappear again, um, and picking up some damage against either Rillaboom or Torkoal. In all honesty, indeed and Dragapult, neither are Pokemon necessarily really well versed to tackle down a Torkoal, but... As Trick Room isn't up, Torkoal is going to be vulnerable being very slow to take a lot of damage and that's going to then deplete the damage of something like an eruption coming out from that Torkoal. Yeah, that's it. You know, the indeed is not really the, the, the Pokemon that you want as an offensive Pokemon at the moment. Um, and also, it's more of a support Pokemon all in all. Dragapult, not really the, the, the kind of Pokemon that in this sort of build is very offensive, but it does have utility moves like the Break and Swipe that are going to be useful. Lower the attack stat further on the Rillaboom, and that's the big thing. While you can take advantage of the expanding force that has got that terrain boost to do some decent damage here, and because the Rillaboom is its G-Max form, it's not able to actually get the grassy terrain back up, so it's kind of hindering it in a little way, unlike its normal Dynamax form would be able to get the grassy terrain and take back the terrain control here. That's very true. It's sort of the catch-22 of those G-Max moves. You get another effect that's unique to that move, but it does remove the standard effect you would get from it, like you said here, of resetting that grassy terrain, which Rillaboom desperately needs at this point. Unless it had some way to switch out and in, it's not going to be able to be reset. And of course, as the last two remaining Pokemon are on the field for Sean, that's not an option. No, definitely not. And it feels like... Now, Miguel's going to be able to kind of tr really close this one out now. The the tall call on Sean's side of the field going to be going down to another expanding force. Rillaboom's not really in a position to pick up the knockout onto the Ndidi, especially after another break and swipe. So you would imagine it's only going to be a matter of time. But what Sean can do now is try and get as much information out of Miguel's Pokemon that he's got on the field right now. If he can just stretch this out a little bit longer, it might be worth. You might get a little bit of information that you don't already have, you know, and get a, a you know, a maybe an idea of how he's playing things more than anything else rather than just the the raw information that you get from um, the, the the team sheets I mean, that's the thing. You now need to start really playing the player, particularly if you are being forced into a game three. You're not just playing against the Pokemon on the field. You're playing against the game style of your opponents. That's really good information you need to be able to identify. Indeed, he's going to go for this um, expanding force once again. Picks up the KO against the Torkoal, however, leaving Rillaboom as Sean's last Pokemon on the field in this game two. Going to be able to go for that knockoff, however. Connect into the Indeedee, but due to these breaking swipes and that burn, really not going to be anything that Miguel has to worry about. And Rillaboom with its secondary effects as well of the rocks and the burn it's only going to be a matter of time for it now but I think you can see when Sean's selecting in his moves as well he tends to be thinking really hard about using every single second um, in order to really start thinking about how he is going to play into this game three and how he's going to adjust going forward 
Yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing, you know, I think he's using this time wisely to really kind of formulate how he's going to approach the Dragapult matchup in this next one because it's it's such a problem Pokemon. He handled it very well in game one, but you know. Well, let's find out, shall we, Lee? Let's jump into game three and see exactly what these players are going to be able to bring for their leads in this game three. Remember, they are fighting it out for their tournament lives here. Everything matters. This is the final game between continuing in the competition or being knocked out. And Miguel going to stick to what happened in game two. We've got that Dragapult and that Colossal lead. And Sean has gone back to the game one strategy. So both these players picking the leads from the games they won a piece. There is a Rillaboom and a Venusaur out in the field there for Sean. Yeah, and, and unlike the first game, though, there is um, there's nothing to really fake out here because you've got the the threat of the the colossal Gigantamax mm -hmm. in, so you can't really risk faking out into that slot, and you can't fake out the the ghost type that the Dragapult is. So you know, um, Miguel has the option here to go for a Surf, G Max the Colossal, get the boost, and remove something from the field. Probably going to look at removing uh, the Venusaur, if anything, but I'm going to eat my words, Lou, because we're not going to see any of that as the Indeedy <laughs> makes its way into the field. Yeah, Indeedy rejoining. And I was going to say, you know, this looks a little bit precarious for Miguel facing down against these two Grass-type Pokemon when there wasn't an Indeedy on the field. Um, we know that it needs to be there to redraw in any of those... Um, powder base moves like the sleep powder coming out from that Venusaur and Sean is going for the play here bringing in the Torkoal getting the sun up chlorophyll is going to activate onto that Venusaur mini it's going to have a super speedy sleep powder coming out from it going to go into the protect there from the colossal so not going to worry and of course if it went into that and Didi probably not going to be able to do anything if it's holding those safety goggles and now Miguel has got himself into that ball position that he wants. He can now just go for that follow me and get the Colossal to Gigantamax up. The one thing he still won't be able to do though until he's able to manipulate the ball position a little bit more for Miguel is activate up the Colossal. Yeah, that's it, you know, um, but maybe he does have the Urshifu in the back, or he's definitely got the Dragapult in the back, so he's going to have that to bring in and take advantage of maybe later in this game. The nice thing that the Colossal's got going for it now, especially with its redirection, follow me support from the Ndidi, is the Sun's actually set up for it. So, you know, if it does decide to go for that Gigantamax here, it's going to be able to knock out that Venusaur very easily, and it's also revealed previously that it's got access to Earth Power, so it could even go after the Torkoal here and get some nice damage onto it. In the meantime, thinking Venusaur's in a little bit bit of you know an awkward position right now very true but Torkoal gonna leave the field and bring the Rillaboom back in you know setting up that grassy surge once again um just to stop you know anything like an expanding force coming out from that indeed from obviously hitting both targets as the terrain has now left the field Sean however not gonna stick with sleep powder is gonna be going for that Gigantamax with the Venusaur um enabling him to be able to go for something like the G-Max Vine Lash and start dealing out that big damage or can go for a Max Quake trying to target down into that opposing Colossal. Even if Max Quake is redirected away from the Ndidi, you're going to get the special defense boost and that's going to help you out against both of these opposing Pokemon. But no surprises, Lee. Miguel going to be Dynamaxing or Gigantamaxing up that Colossal. Yeah, it makes sense to do it right now when you've got that great support next to you with that, that Ndidi that follow me there. Um, no reason not to and make use of the Colossal while you've got time, especially if he does have, um, you know, we don't know if he's got the Urshifu in the back or and we know that he's got the Dragapult to come in at some point and really take advantage of um, that Steam Engine ability. Problem is though, if the Venusaur sticks around here, then um, it gets a little bit difficult, especially as we're going to see now the Max Quake come out, which will give it a special defense boost. Um, so will it will it have enough to take an attack? There's no weakness policy activated yet on this this Colossal, so it's not going to be as hitting as, as hard as we're kind of used to it in the past. That's the thing, Colossal without the weakness policy boost can be sometimes a little underwhelming. Um, going to be going for that G-Max Volcalith and, you know, again, the residual damage will still be there even if the initial power of this attack into that Rillaboom really wasn't doing too much at all. Um, again, however, the grassy terrain is going to start counteracting that and I think this is going to be one of those games where we're going to see a lot of residual effects going around, whether it is going to be from terrain, from the environment or even things from like Will-O-Wisp and things like that. Yeah, I think a lot of it's going to start to really add up very soon. And you know, the Venusaur is the next one in line to probably go for a G-Max Vine Lash and get <laughs> that residual to the side of the, the field started, you know, on uh, Miguel's side. So um, I think the Ndidi sticking around here is very useful to get the most out of your Colossal. You're still putting a lot of pressure on both the Rillaboom and the Venusaur with the Colossal, you know. Um, I don't think the Ndidi goes down to... 
a vine lash here i think it probably would take it potentially um and if it can take it that's huge because it means that you're going to pull in two attacks this next turn and your colossal is really safe to go for maybe a max flare into the, the venusaur and with that sun boost mm. it might be enough to take it down or you may go the other direction and just go after the rillaboom that's not likely to carry protect remove that from the field we, we've seen how well sean uses the rillaboom so maybe that's a good threat to go after here if you are miguel but the the options are um going into a max guard which you don't want to risk and the options not with the uh, the rillaboom there well, Grassy Glide going to come into the Indeedy. Not enough to pick up the KO, though, so it's also going to be able to draw in the G-Max Vine Lash coming out from that Venusaur. And like you said, Lee, Sean is going to be wanting to set up his own residual effects on the field here. So now the Vines will be whipping around on Miguel's side of the field at the end of each turn. Colossal going for that Max Flare, however, targeting down into the Rillaboom. It is enough to remove it from the field. Um, I do like this play here from Miguel. Like you said, you know, Sean's been piloting this Rillaboom really well. To remove it just stops him having that maneuverability of coming in, having potential to go for fake out. And if indeed he had still been around, it could have been the option to remove the, you know, other terrain setter. But as both of them have now left, that's not something that either player really has to worry about at the moment. The grass type, the grass terrain will be here to stay until, of course, it expires. Yeah, and the, I think the one thing that Miguel probably is, he's obviously just taken advantage of with those big fire attacks from the G-Max Colossal, you know, the Max Flare taking advantage of the sun, but the one thing he really needs to uh, kind of stall out at the minute to, to get something like uh, Dragapult onto the field is um, stall out the sun, because if you can do that, then you get Dragapult in a decent position to maybe activate the, uh, the, the the steam engine ability and that's what you really need to do now as long as this Venusaur is on the field and the sun's up it's very difficult to get that steam engine activation you know and the Venusaur going to be able to do some very big damage um, you know to the and as we see here is the airship <laughs> so uh, there is the option there for Miguel to set that steam engine ability up like we've seen in previous games yeah, did you say big damage there, Lee? Uh, Shafu's joined the field, can go for the Aqua Jet um, and start dealing out really big damage <laughs> with that Colossal, you know, getting its speed boosted up as well. It doesn't have to worry about the fact that the Venusaur will be in sun and getting its speed doubled as a result. It will have its steam mm. engine boost and be super, super speedy. Something like a Max Flare could be dealing a huge chunk of damage and there isn't really a lot that Torkoal can do in retaliation to Colossal. No, not really. It might carry a move like Yawn or something that it can do to slow it down, but the immediate threat here is onto that Venusaur. You know you're going to have to really try. And uh, maybe Max Guard here, maybe Yawn into the Colossal if you've got it is an option there, but there's not really anything you can do immediately to prevent the Aqua Jet um, activation of the, uh, the, the Steam Engine here. But surprisingly, we've just seen a Detect from the Urshifu. Oh, just going to be a defensive player piece there for Miguel. The Max Quake going to go down into that um, Colossal there as the Solar Beam as well comes in from the Torkoal. But I think that's going to fall onto a Detect there from the Urshifu as well. So potentially from Miguel's side, just wanting to stall out the last of these turns. Um, but interesting, it could have been a really good opportunity to go for something like the Aqua Jet and try and pick up a KO against that opposing Venusaur. Yeah, that's the thing. I think you know, maybe maybe he did suspect a potential max guard there from the Venusaur, and then that play mm. makes sense, you know, from Miguel just being very cautious, not wanting to put himself in any awkward positions where the Torco can maybe get Sean back into a, a more advantageous situation where he's because he, his back is really against the wall now, you know. There's nothing, like I said in the previous turn, to prevent that Aqua Jet into the Colossal, and with the sun out on the field as well. That's the problem. It's weakening the Aqua Jet, which is really what Miguel wants. You know, it's not. It's meaning the the uh, the Colossal is not going to take as much damage at all, and it's going to be able to do some big, big damage to uh, the Venusaur and just outspeed it. Even in the in the sun with that chlorophyll ability, it's just not going to worry about that, that double speed boost that it's got. Um, so. Depends what Sean has in the back. We've still not seen his fourth Pokemon, so he might have something that could come in and do some work uh, against these Pokemon. But, you know, really now is the time if you've got Trick Room, I know, Trick Room option in the back to try and get it onto the field and try and get it set up. Because if you can get the Torkoal in a Trick Room environment, then you've got a little bit of a chance, maybe. 
Exactly. I mean, again, as the Colossal isn't now in his Gigantamax, taking something like an Aqua Jet is going to hurt a lot more. As you can see, it takes it down to nearly 50%. But having that stun up, like you mentioned there, Lee, really is paying off dividends here. It's going to be able to stop that Aqua Jet from dealing even more damage. And Colossal, even outside of Gigantamax, is going to be looking super threatening here. It's got its weakness policy boost up as well. And it's able to connect the Heat Wave. Going to go onto that Venusaur, pick up the Solid KO. Of course, not going to be super effective it by any means on that Torkoal, but still is able to deal a good chunk of damage. Torkoal able to fire off a solar beam due to the sun as well. This two charge move will now just be a one and will be able to go down into um, the either the Urshifu or the Colossal. It is indeed the Urshifu um, and picks up that solid KO, you know, being the Rapid Strike variant. Not going to be liking any of those grass type moves coming its way. And this now leaves Miguel and Sean down to their last two remaining Pokemon. Um, it forces yeah. Miguel to bring that Dragapult back in. Yeah, we're going to go back to that original lead that we saw at the very start here <laughs> with the, the Dragapult coming back onto the field. And I wonder, I really do wonder if it's the stack attacker here for Sean, you know. It could mm. be. And, um, oh, it's it's not at all. It is the Charizard that is going to be coming onto the field for Sean, which, you know, if you're relying again on that Meteor Beam, that's where the issue comes in, isn't it, Lou? You know, we've covered this before. Uh, it, that is where the issue lies. If you are relying on Meteor Beam with the uh, the, the Colossal, it's a two-charge turn move. So you need to find a way to, to avoid Scorching Sands for one turn and allow your, your you know, to play around uh, protecting things like that on the Charizard the following turn because you can't just protect on it. That's the other thing about it. Yeah, that's the thing. If you're the Charizard player and you see Meteor Beam go off on that first turn, raise up the special attack, then you know it's coming in the next turn, so you might as well just protect from it. it it's you know not like it can fire through, and that's why we see it so often on Nile Ego um, with something like the Power Herb, so it can um, just boost everything up in one turn and then fire off such a powerful attack, particularly when you get that special attack boost from the first turn charge. Um, Colossal as well isn't looking you know, particularly healthy at this stage. It needs to be re really careful about how it's going to keep its longevity here on the field. And it might be up to Dragapult to find a way to deal with this Charizard. Colossal just going to go for a Protect here as Charizard as well matches a Protect. Um, just maybe wants to protect itself from anything coming out from that Dragapult. But Dragapult instead just going to slink off the field here, vanish away into the abyss to reappear in the next turn as Torkoal goes for a flamethrower into the empty space Dragapult left behind. And I think this is again where things are going to start getting very, very interesting here for Miguel um, and Sean because Miguel's having this residual damage from the vines here at the moment. Yeah, and that Dragapult slinking off the field so eloquently put there, Lou, <laughs> um, really is the only thing that Miguel's got to deal with the Charizard now. Like you say, uh, Colossal can go for a Heat Wave, um, but the thing is, going for it this turn is you're going to get decent damage onto the Charizard. I, I doubt you pick up the knockout onto Torkoal, um, and then you're hoping for the Phantom Force to pick up the knockout onto the Charizard, the double up there. Um, so... Uh, you, that's what you're kind of hoping for. If the Charizard survives that double up, then um, then you're in trouble because then you lose your Colossal and then I don't know if Dragapult's going to have enough to deal with both a Torkoal and a Charizard at the same time, even though it is, you know, Dragon-type, it does resist Fire-type attacks, uh, but these these Pokemon have other options as well to take advantage of, you know, on top of just the mm. Fire-type that they've uh, got access to and what they really rely on more commonly. Well, Colossal's going to go for that Earth Power, activating once again that Sugar Berry on the Torkoal, but depending on the the remaining HP, and Torkoal didn't have a lot left, let's be honest, is going to be able to pick up the KO here, and the Phantom Force is going to be able to do some good damage to that opposing Charizard, but is it going to be enough to really apply pressure? It does over 50%, so another one of those will be able to pick up the KO against it, and Scorching Sands going to the Colossal picks up the KO, but Dragapult, could this be the answer for Miguel? This could be the answer, you know, that the big damage there and obviously the, the recoil damage is stacking up on the, the Charizard from the Life Orb item, just not helping it at all here. And the Dragapult in an extremely good position just to click that Phantom Force button again from Miguel and one more will do the job and you cannot protect on it. That's one of the beauties about that move. So it looks like Miguel's done enough to wrap this one up. Uh, Dragapult being the, the Pokemon to come out on top here and, and just do enough to kind of clinch this one. And what was a very, very close and tight game here. Um, you, you kind of thought at one stage that Sean had probably done enough to kind of close this one out, especially when uh, the Meteor Beam antics kind of came into play, but he played every turn perfectly out and uh, as you see he's going to be able to pick up the knockout with his dragapult